It's Sunday morning here in Rome, so we decided to go to Mass and to see the new stairs at the Scala Sancta, newly restored, I should say. So we got an Uber car and we took off and arrived here at the Scala Sancta Church, went in to see the stairs that were from the Antonia Fortress in Jerusalem and have now been restored and they're out in the open without a covering for people to see, only for a few months and then they're going to be covered again. So we're glad we got to come and see him now. This is a map of Jerusalem as it was in Jesus' time, zooming into the praetorium where the stairs were originally housed. And up and down these steps are beautiful biblical art, the whole story of salvation. Here's Adam and Eve being kicked out of the garden in Genesis 3, and here's baby Moses being pulled out of the bulrushes. We see the backside of St. John Lateran as we're approaching, and here is the front, this massive and beautiful church the mother church of the whole world. This is where the popes lived for many centuries. Here you see the keys of the kingdom, and also it says the mother church of the world. There's a mass going on here at St. John Lateran, the mother church of the world, and it's nice to know that People think the churches are empty, but there are over 800 churches here in Rome, and all of them have multiple masses with lots of people here on Sundays. Up there at St. John Lateran are the heads, reliquaries, the heads of Peter and Paul under the altar, part of the table that Peter used to celebrate Mass here. Up in the front there, I'll show you in a minute, is the chair of St. Peter, because this is the mother church of the world. And in that reliquary there is, a, is the Last Supper, is part of the table that was celebrated where they celebrated Mass in Jerusalem with Jesus. Here are the 12 apostles. And they're like the columns, pillars holding up the church. Here is St. Matthew, also called Levi, and at his feet you can see the bags of gold coins because he was a tax collector, an IRS agent. And here's Thomas, who is holding out his finger, the finger that went in Jesus' side. And as you can see, it's way bigger than a normal finger should be. Above the apostles are reliefs like this one. Carved. It's all from the Old Testament, and they are prefiguring or typological of this side, which is all the New Testament. And here's an example. Joseph's brothers in the book of Genesis sold him into slavery. His brothers sold him into slavery. And here, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, his brothers, especially Judas, sold him into slavery. And then you have the resurrection, just like the people coming up out of the Red Sea with Moses. They are also coming up out of baptism to new life, the resurrection. And there's Jesus raised from the dead. And Jonah being eaten by the whale and coming out of the belly of the whale after three days and three nights. Jesus came out of the tomb. This is a great place to go to confession, which Janet and I both did while we were here. This is the Church of San Clemente, where we're going to be bringing our group in December and next year too, in June and August. In there is the bones of Ignatius of Antioch and Clement of Rome. 
Right down there is the Colosseum, 300 yards down the road, where Ignatius of Antioch was martyred in 107. His bones were taken back to Antioch in Syria and eventually brought back here. And we're going to have mass now in front of the bones of two of the apostolic fathers who made me Catholic, convinced me through their writings, Ignatius of Antioch and St. Clement of Rome, here in the church of San Clemente. Dominican, Irish Dominicans are preparing for Mass, and we're going to have Mass at this altar right above the bodily remains of Ignatius of Antioch, who was eaten by lions. Here you see the picture in the Colosseum and Clement of Rome. And these are two of my favorite guys. They help me understand the Catholic faith, and uh, we'll have Mass right under their tombs. This is the Tree of Life. It's a beautiful mosaic that's like the Tree of Life in the garden, but it's the cross that brings about all of the beautiful things that Christianity has provided. After Mass, we walked down and around the Colosseum where Ignatius of Antioch was martyred. And here's where the gladiators were trained, just on the other side of the street for the Colosseum. And now it's just such a beautiful place with these old ruins and all the flowers. We arrive at the Trevi Fountain, which is always crowded with tourists, people wanting to turn around and throw coins in. But uh, it's always a nice place. And here we arrive at the Trevi Fountain on our walk back to our apartment. There's the Trevi Fountain on Sunday morning. A lot of people here. Next, we arrive at Janet's favorite gelato shop, Crispino's, which makes their gelato with honey. We always have to stop here on every trip we come to Rome. As we continue our walk, we come to the church of St. Ignatius of Loyola, one of these beautiful, massive churches of the Jesuits. And of course, we always pray for them while we're here. And the ceiling here is back in the glory days of the Jesuits when they used to be great. This is their conversion converting the world with missionaries to South America, North America, Europe. Praying for the Jesuits while we're here. They're having Mass here at St. Ignatius of Loyola Church. Every one of the churches are having Masses. Six or seven a day. I stopped in because this is one of my favorite. This is St. Uh, Ignatius of Loyola stepping on the neck of Martin Luther and the heresies of the Reformation, which is really the deformation. So, ah, one of my favorite statues. Used to be one of those guys. Now I'm Catholic and glad for it. And here's the Pantheon, once the home of all the gods, Pan being all Theos God, 
but now it's a church and look at the line it's a probably uh, all the way around the pet piazza probably an hour line Tiber River. I've heard of that book, Crossing the Tiber. We're going across the Bridge of the Angels. There's the flagellum that Jesus was whipped with, and there is the pillar where he was attached for his whipping. And there's the crown of thorns, all the things these angels are holding that were part of Jesus's suffering. There right ahead of us is the castle of the angel. the Tiber River again, and there's St. Peter's. We're on our way to convert to the church. This is where Sean proposed to Emily. Right here on the Tiber River, our son-in-law, Sean, proposed to our daughter, Emily. The Tiber River there and St. Peter's there. What an emotional day that was. There's St. Peter's. We're going to walk past it on our way to lunch and back to our apartment. One of our all-time favorite restaurants in Rome is La Pilata de Mario. Janet and I have been eating here together for over 20 years, and this is our good friend Mario, the owner of the restaurant. We love his food, always fresh and green and crispy and great pasta and pizza and everything else. So uh, it's always a place where we visit when we're here in Rome, and we also bring our groups here. Here's a family that we met that we really enjoy. And we also like to see priests and nuns all over the place. Here's the Dome of St. Peter's right out the window. La Pilata spelled backwards. And then we get back to our apartment. Here we can see the Dome of St. Peter's from our apartment and across the street. And it's a beautiful place, a really a residence. We highly recommend it to anyone coming to Rome. Thanks for joining us on this special Sunday morning. God bless you all. <laughs>